Well, the Christ candle has been lit, so it's legal to say it now. Are you ready? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We'll say it to our congregation. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry, Christmas. Merry Christmas. We've been wanting to say it all day. I know we have on this fourth Sunday of Advent. Well, it is Christmas time now. And thank you all for being here tonight. I wanted to talk to you tonight because I know you heard the Christmas story read a moment ago. I want to talk to you about small things. Uh, most of you are small. Compared to your parents, you're small, or you're smaller than me, you're small. So I want to talk to you about some small things. Do you know the country that Jesus was born in is called Israel? And do you know it's one of the smallest countries in the world? It's not the smallest, but it's one of the smallest countries in the world. Do you know that you could put four Israels in the state of South Carolina? That's how small it is. And we live in the United States, which is a big country. You could put four Israels in South Carolina. And the town that Jesus was born in, Bethlehem, is one of the smallest villages in all of Israel. A very, very small village. And Mary, who was Jesus' mother, was just a young girl who really wasn't well known when she became the mother of Jesus. The place where she had the baby Jesus in the stable would have been one of the smallest rooms that's attached to the side of a home. It's kind of where you kept your pets or where you kept your animals if they had to come in from bad weather, kind of like a utility room in your house where the washer and dryer might be. And the manger that they put Jesus in would have been one of the smallest pieces of furniture that you could find. It was a trough that cattle ate out of, but it wouldn't be as big as a sofa or big as a bed. It was actually very, very small. And then the shepherds came, and they were probably some of the least paid people in the world. They kept sheep in the middle of the night. They didn't get paid a lot, but they were the ones that the angels told about the baby Jesus. And speaking of angels, compared to God, angels are kind of small, aren't they? Because God is so big that the universe couldn't hold God. But an angel seems as about our size and came and shared the story with the shepherds. Almost everything in the Christmas story is small. And it's a reminder that God really specializes in taking small things and doing great things with them. God doesn't want to be the kind of God that has to have big things and great things and extraordinary things to work with. God can take the smallest things in the world and do beautiful things with them. And in fact, when God decided to come to the world, He came as a giant, right? Nope. He came as a what? As a baby, as small as a human being could be, that's the way God chose to come. Now I wanted to show you something else that's very small tonight. Now we have heard some wonderful musical instruments tonight. We've heard the organ and the piano and violins. They are very complex, wonderful musical instruments. This is one of the smallest, simplest of all musical instruments. Does anybody know what it's called? What's that? A recorder, yeah. And the recorders first showed up in about 1300 in Europe, the year 1300, when some of your grandparents were born. I'm just kidding. They're not that old. It was way back in 1300 when recorders first showed up. And the reason they're called recorders, that word actually comes from a French word and a Latin word that looks just like recorder, is because they really weren't used to play music so much as they were to remember music or to remind you of a tune. So people had recorders so that they heard a tune they liked. They could just kind of play the tune and remember it. So it was called a recorder, a reminder instrument, instrument so that you didn't forget a tune. You all probably want me to play this, aren't you? Because I'm really good. I mean, you know, you've heard, you've heard the violins and the organ and the piano. It's nothing compared to this. Are you ready? You really want me to play it? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, that's what I want right there. I was gonna play Good King Wenceslas, but I don't think I can get through it. But it was a very small instrument just meant to remind you of a tune until the 1600s and early 1700s. Some of the greatest composers in the world, that's during the Baroque period of music. So there were composers like Handel who wrote the Messiah and Vivaldi and Telemann and even Bach started writing concert music for recorders. 
and put together ensembles of recorders and let recorders play in symphonies and wrote parts for them. And all of a sudden, those men who were masters of music took something very small and insignificant and made a real instrument out of it. It's very much the same way that God takes very, very small things and because God is our master can make something incredible come from it. I like recorders because they make music. And when you listen to the Christmas story, in fact, somebody this morning went out and looked at me. It was not one of you. It was an older youth looked at me and rolled their eyes and said, why is there so much music in the church service during the Christmas season? And it's because if you notice that almost every small thing that God uses gives God a song back. When Mary's chosen to be the mother of Jesus, as small as she is, she sings a song. When the shepherds are showed the baby Jesus, it says they went back rejoicing and praising God, singing a song. Even in the stories that we see on TV, when Cindy Lou Who helps the Grinch learn about Christmas, at the end of the story, everybody sings a song. When the little Christmas tree helps Charlie Brown and his friends remember the meaning of Christmas, at the end of the story, everybody sings a song. The little drummer boy who's not in the Bible gets to see the baby Jesus and plays a song. Music comes forth when little things are used for God. So tonight, to remind you that even though you are small, and even I'm small compared to God and other people, that God takes all of us, even though we are small, just like God does everything in the Christmas story and does something extraordinary with it. Since a recorder is a reminder, I'm going to give each of you a recorder for Christmas to remind you of how God uses small things. Now here's the deal, I know you wanna play them. I know you do. And you know what? I'm gonna let you play them in church tonight. But you have to wait until I tell you to play them, okay? So I'm gonna give them to you. I want you to take them back to your seat. You can let your mom or dad hold them if you just feel like you can't, can't not play it until the appropriate time. They can hold them for you. And then I'm going to tell you after the benediction when to play and what to play. Now, we're going to play Joy to the World together after the benediction, and you don't have to worry if you don't know it because these recorders automatically play that song. You just blow into them, and they will play it, okay? All right. I'm going to get our acolytes to help me hand these out to you. And you can, I'll tell you what, let's have a prayer first. Then when you get your recorder, you can go back to your seat. Let's pray. Loving God, we thank you that though each of us are small, just like with everything in the Christmas story, you choose to love us and use us in your world. Help us to go forth singing tonight because we have been in the presence of your Son, Jesus Christ. And it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen.